Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's Dina Calmetti here and Susan Davis with Jesus 24-7. And today we have a special report about how the Holy Spirit teaches. Susan, I am excited to hear more about this. Well, I'm really excited about it myself. And this is a very significant topic. I mean, it's important to know how the Holy Spirit teaches and the difference between teachings of the Holy Spirit and teachings of men, because the Bible talks about that. So we're going to focus in on basically one scripture in the Bible. Can you believe that? One scripture can say a lot. I know, exactly. So we're going to take a look at one scripture in the Bible, and we're going to do a whole special report around this scripture. That's how important this particular scripture is. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm making reference to the single verse, 1 Corinthians 2.13. And by the way, this happens to be one of my favorite scriptures because it has so much meaning in it. It says, in which the Holy Spirit shows that he teaches by comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So we know that leading up to the scripture that there's the choice between the interpretation of men or the understanding of God in the Bible. And so we, in a study of a single verse in the Bible, we can see major necessity of being fully surrendered to the Lord. And the only thought that matters in the word of God is the original thought of God and not the interpretation of men. And so the only way to understand this is to be totally and fully surrendered to God so that the Holy Spirit can guide you to all truth. And an understanding of this can be seen in that verse. Now, before we get in there, I just want to say really quickly, how do we surrender to the Lord? Well, we acknowledge that Jesus died on the cross for us, and he paid a huge price. But what he did was he covered our sin with his own blood. But it doesn't end there. And so many of the churches stop teaching beyond that point. But basically what Jesus did on that cross, Dina, was give us the privilege to come back into the will of the Father, which was lost when Adam and Eve were in the garden, and they chose to go to their own will. Uh, That's what Satan was talking about, you know, they can be as gods, and that was to have their own will, like God has a will, and that's where, you know, the cursing came on all of mankind, all of humanity. But because of what Jesus did and the price he paid, we can now come back into the will of the Father. And it's amazing because when we move into the will of the Father and pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because, you know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one, then something really amazing happens. And that is where the Holy Spirit moves into place and starts to take you into the deeper understanding of the Word of God. Okay, so here's a great example. And I've said this before, if you want to understand the meaning of any book that's written, the best person to talk to, right, is the author of the book. And so that's why the Bible is no different. We absolutely need to have a close relationship and be locked into a relationship with God, who is the author of the book. And it's Holy Spirit breathed, the Bible. And so let's go back to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 2.13, and the Holy Spirit shows that he teaches, and he does it by comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Now, I'm using the King James Version for this scripture. Now, what does it mean exactly for someone to compare a spiritual thing with a spiritual thing? Well, in order to answer this question, we first have to ask ourselves, what is a spiritual thing? And what is God referring to? Well, a spiritual thing are the spiritual things of God. They are the gifts of God that come only from God. And you can't give them to yourself. But when you make a full surrender to the Lord, these gifts can come on you. Now, do they come on everyone at once? No, they are given by the Holy Spirit to different people. And that's why we need the church to edify each other. And I'm not just talking about the building, a church building or denomination. I'm talking about the people. The people are the church. And they come together and they support each other 
through the various spiritual giftings that have been given to them by God, by the Holy Spirit. Now, what are some of these giftings? Well, one of them is speaking in tongues. Another is interpretation of tongues. Another is words of knowledge, words of wisdom, dreams, visions, prophecy, and works of wonders given by the power of the Holy Spirit through that full surrender to God. For example, now I'm going to give you an example of how this worked in the New Testament and how the Holy Spirit works. So if we go back to Acts 10, 9, Peter, the apostle Peter, was given the first spiritual thing, and it was a vision of a blanket three times of unclean food, but, you know, then Peter questioned it, right? And he was like, you know, he challenged God. He literally challenged, you know, Peter being himself challenged what God was showing him and God had to show it to him three times and he finally gets it the third but it was the I, the concept that he was now able to eat some of the food that had formerly been taboo for the Jews but these were food of the Gentiles so that was the first spiritual thing was a vision that was given to Peter now he has a second spiritual experience right following that, and we see this in Acts 10.44, and this is where Peter has directed, uh, well, actually, an angel directed Cornelius, a Gentile, to seek after Peter. And then Peter saw Cornelius and the Gentiles who were baptized in the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And so that's the second spiritual thing. The second spiritual thing was actually the encounter of the angel. So that was like a works of wonders. An angel appears to Cornelius. And then also the Holy Spirit gives the Gentiles the gift of tongues, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter is, he's witness to this event. Now, what is the revelation of the two events? It is that Peter is to now take the gospel out to the Gentiles. So the first thing was the vision of the blanket with the food that was formerly unclean, the food of the Gentiles, God saying, now you can eat this. And then the second is the encounter with the angel and Cornelius and the group receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues. So basically what we're seeing is a comparison uh, back to how does this tie in? It, we go back to 1 Corinthians 2.13, and it is the comparing of spiritual things with spiritual things. Okay, and so that's the tie-in. And that is exactly how the Holy Spirit teaches. Now, Dina, I want to go a little bit deeper into this now that I have explained how this particular verse works. And I want to talk about how the translations of the Bible have been skewed by the interpretation of men over the years. God's word translation changes the original meaning of the Holy Spirit to we uh, explain the spiritual things to those who have the spirit. Now, this is a totally different meaning of comparing two spiritual things. Danger, danger, danger. So men have translated the original meaning and thought of God out of this vital teaching and changing the meaning altogether completely. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. I want to look at three different versions and how it's been altered. Holman Christian Standard Bible says, We also speak these things not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. Okay, Dina, do you see how that is totally altered the meaning of that whole thing? Yes. Okay, it's saying that they're explaining spiritual things, okay, we got that part, to spiritual people. That is completely not even close to what we spoke of a little bit ago. That has nothing to do with how the, the Holy Spirit teaches. That's, uh, that is an interpretation of men, and it alters the meaning completely. Let's look at International Standard Version. It says, we don't speak about these things with words taught us by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit as we explain spiritual things to spiritual people. Okay, again, 
what we have here is a complete change to the original meaning, and it changes it all together. Okay, in the Net Bible, we speak about these things not with words taught us by human wisdom, but with those taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. Again, we're looking at an alteration of what this section means. Now, New American Bible changes comparing a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing to combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Okay, what? This has changed the meaning totally. We're not comparing a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. We're combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. That's not even close, Dina. No, it's not. Changing the meaning. They're changing the meaning. And so, you know, that alters the whole meaning altogether. Next, we go to the Weymouth New Testament of that particular verse and it says of these we speak not in language which men's wisdom teaches us but in that which the spirit teaches adapting as we do spiritual words to spiritual truths okay that whole adapting as we do spiritual words to spiritual truths not only is that hard to understand and makes no sense it's not even close to the concept of comparing spiritual things with spiritual things as I described what happened to Peter in the Bible. This is not even close. And so these new translations are way off kelter, and we really need the Holy Spirit to help us navigate these waters because of the alteration of the translations by men and the interpretation of men. The Bible even said it would happen. And it has. Now, if you really want to get a close look at how this all works, you can look at the comparison of a scripture on something called BibleHub.com. And you can go over there and see the variance between all these different translations. And it's kind of frightening, to be honest with you. But the thing that we need is we need a close relationship with the Holy Spirit so that we can really get a deeper and accurate understanding of the Bible and not something skewed like this text from the Weymouth New Testament, okay? So let me go forward now, and I want to talk about something that's really amazing is people might ask me or state, oh, well, what you cited from the New Testament about Peter and the comparing of a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing was something that happened during earlier in the New Testament. But I'm here to tell you that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and the way he teaches is literally the same. We can see that today in our own lives, and I want to give some testimony and put some real teeth behind what I'm trying to explain here in this teaching about how the Holy Spirit teaches. So I'm going to give some testimonies and some examples in my own life of these methods of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a look. I'll just tell you that one time I was with some friends at the Creation Museum in Florence, Kentucky, which is an awesome place if you've never been there. And one of the things that they have on display is they actually have Bible animals you know they have a little zoo and they actually have animals from the bible there and they had these peacocks on display and i was so excited i love you know i just love peacocks and when i went to the place where the peacocks were dina they were not there there were no peacocks (laughs) they were they were the peahens were out but the peacocks were gone and i was so disappointed and i said something to the lord i'm like you know i'd really just like to see one peacock out here (laughs) And I was stunned because the next thing that happened, a male peacock, right, comes over to the fence and he opens his feathers and stands right in front of me, right? I mean, it was astounding. That was a a God moment. It was amazing. And so then the next thing I know, I'm just standing there just floored because this happened right after I prayed. A second peacock comes out of the hutch, walks over in front of the fence and opens up his, spreads out his wings. And I'm standing there looking at two full-on peacocks on display, right? And I'm thinking, this is incredible. And then a third peacock comes out of the hutch 
and walks over to the fence and opens up his beautiful feathers. And so three peacocks are standing in front of me in full regalia. Okay? I'm not kidding. That's so awesome. I couldn't believe it. I mean, and it wasn't like I waited a long time. It was like right after I asked that. So I was just like, this is stunning. It was stunning. I knew it was God. I knew this was an act of God. And I have to tell you what happened to me the same day after we left the museum park and we went to the car and I had my Bible in the car. And what happened was it fell open. It it just it was random. It wasn't like I opened it to a certain location. It just fell open. And do you know that the picture on the particular page of the Bible was a picture of a peacock? <laughs> That's totally the Holy Spirit. I mean, is that just amazing? And it was almost like his calling card. Like, yes, I did this. And you know, this. <laughs> He's just showing off now. Yes, exactly. Exactly. But the whole point was. It's, it's how the Holy Spirit works. It was a comparison of a spiritual thing with a spiritual thing. So these were two works of wonders, right? One after the other. And they were confirming each other. It was a confirmation and no coincidence. There's no coincidences. There's only confirmation when it comes to the Lord, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, you know, there's other things that I've experienced that line up with Peter's experience. And, uh, you know, here's one of my favorites. And it was of a vision I had that I want to tell you, I was on the floor and I was praying and I was actually praying for protection. And all of a sudden I had this amazing vision and I saw myself praying under a shield of angel wing. Now these angel wings, it was like there were a dozen angels and they had their wings up above them and they were forming a shield. So it was oval. And it was like just wings. I mean, I couldn't see these angels. All I saw was a big group of wings above me. Now, I knew they were angels somehow, and I knew they were above me. And it was basically a white feather-winged oval shield. (laughs) It was stunning. And so after this was over, I got up from seeing the vision. I went to get my Bible, and the next thing I opened, the Bible just randomly fell open. And I looked down, right? uh, I went, I mean, there's all kinds of scripture on the page, but I went right to the scripture. And imagine my total shock as my eyes fell on the scripture. And it was from Psalm 914. And it reads, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And that was a scripture I saw immediately following that particular vision. Now, Look at if, God. Uh, right. And so this is definitely a comparing of a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. So what is the first thing here? It was the vision, a vision. And the second thing was... You know, the reference in the Bible, the way the Lord brought me to that scripture by the Bible opening up and my eyes going right to it. That's a work of wonder. And so these are exactly some of the amazing ways that the Holy Spirit teaches and confirms. And what was the revelation between those two events was, yes, God was showing me that he is our shield and protector. It was a confirmation of that. And so these are some of the things, amazing things. Now, I had done some work in an inner city with the family there, and I spoke with a pastor at at the church and talking to him about this inner city project that I was involved in. And he was talking about the kind of hardship activities that are commonplace in the area that I was working in. He responded to me and he took me aside and he said he had a Bible verse he wanted to give me. And I will not forget this. He quoted to me Galatians 6, 9, and it reads, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And so that was a beautiful scripture for me and very supportive. I went home that same evening, the very same day, and I checked my email, and I have to tell you that my daily devotional popped up, and guess what it was, Dina? Yes, you're not going to believe. It was Galatians 6, 9, the very <laughs> same scripture that was quoted to me earlier this day by that pastor. Now, what really 
are the chances of that? That's pretty phenomenal. Out of, out of all the verses in the Bible, that's what was sent to you. Right. Yeah. How many verses are in the Bible? Well, I'll tell you, approximately 33,000 verses in the Bible. Okay. And so this one would come into my email that day. Now, is that amazing? Well, here is an example of the comparing a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. So God put it on this pastor's heart to quote that scripture to me. And then later, you know, the work of wonder is that it shows up in my email later that day. Okay, so no coincidence, all orchestrated by God. And this is a comparing of a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. And what was God doing there? He was providing encouragement. He was revealing that he's happy that we're doing these kinds of work in the inner city projects and that kind of thing. So this is exactly how the Holy Spirit teaches by comparing the spiritual thing to spiritual thing. Let me tell you another incident. Uh, I have a testimony of God. I had a lot of information, a lot of data on giant earth cracks, and I wanted to do a Facebook page on it, and I put it off, put it off. Finally, one of my friends said, why don't you do this page? And I did it. I sat down and did it. And on that same day that I was developing this Facebook page called End Times Giant Earth Cracks, and by the way, go over and check it out, I get a lot of Facebook friends, inquiries, and I always like to check them out before I bring them onto my page. And I had this one person friend me the very same day I was working on that project. His name is Yi Bung Kwan of South Korea. I didn't know him at all, but he came over to my page that day that I was working on Giant Earth Cracks, and I decided to check him out because I didn't know him. And I want to tell you, Dina, that his page was absolutely full of data about giant earth cracks. Oh, wow. Can you believe that? That's incredible. Yes. So if they're... Listen, I was collecting this data, and so was he. And so God led a Christian brother to me who was collecting the same data on the same day I was working on that project. Is that phenomenal? That's amazing. It is. And again, we're doing the comparing of a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. Okay, I was working on a project for the Lord. And God brings someone along to show me more information. So again, this is God working and confirming. It's very confirming. And he does it in this manner. You know, we can call it coincidence. But like I said, I call it, you know, divine. What do we want to call it? <laughs> we call it a comparing a spiritual thing to a spiritual thing. But we also call it divine encounters. You know, divine encounters. And nothing is coincidental. It's all purposefully done by God. There are no coincidences. It's, um, you know, I had another incident where there was a pastor in Africa and he wrote me and he was asking for my picture. And okay, I decided to send it. He seemed like a nice enough fellow and I trusted him. And so I sent him a picture. And he wrote me back and he said, you know, wanted to know if the letters that I put out from the Lord uh, were from, in fact, from God. And so he asked for my picture and he said God gave him a dream and in the dream he saw my face. And so when I sent the picture, it was me he saw in the dream. Oh, wow. Isn't that incredible? That's incredible. And yes, and see, once again... We have a situation where God is confirming, you know, he's using a dream to confirm something that he had requested for my picture and I provided it and then he confirmed it through a dream. It was, a, you know, a spiritual thing confirming another spiritual thing. And so we continue to see this over and over. Uh, there was a time when I had some doubt that God would answer my prayer about something. I was really doubting. And I was quoting scripture to God in prayer. And I said, Lord, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. You're familiar with that scripture? Yes. And I literally said it three times in this prayer. I said, Lord, I believe, help me with my unbelief. And I cited it three times, okay? So I was really trying to make a point with God. <laughs> well, after I was done with this prayer, I tripped on downstairs i flipped on my computer and i checked my was checking my email that day and there it was my daily scripture email popped up and yes it was the same scripture of lord 
I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Praise and God. so I know. And see, there you go. What was going on? We had a prayer was going on. I'm having an encounter with the Lord through prayer. I go downstairs and he confirms it through a supernatural work of wonder. He made it possible that the daily email that came into my email was the same one that I spoke of in my prayer. So, I mean, I could just cite all sorts of amazing testimonies that line up with how the Holy Spirit teaches. But I think you are getting the idea. I could go on and on about this. People today say, oh, God doesn't talk to his people anymore. I cited you several instances that, you know, he does communicate with us. And, uh, you know, we've got the scripture to back it up. You know, I want to mention, Dina, that now that we've kind of gotten very deep into this one scripture of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 2.13, the comparing of spiritual things with spiritual things, and I've demonstrated through testimonies in the Bible about Peter and my own personal testimonies, we can see how significant that scripture is, and we can certainly see why these incorrect interpretations and translations of the Bible are, are grossly wrong and do not line up with what was intentionally meant to be understood. It's a gross interpretation mm -hmm. and changes the original meaning and thought of God on a vital teaching. And we can see this and how dangerous that is. And so it's very significant that we have the Holy Spirit in our life to show us all truth. Otherwise, we're going to run aground with these interpretations of men. You know, if they're interpreting incorrectly, it's, it's probably because they have religious spirits. Again, that's not coming from God. That's coming from the enemy. And, you know, when I talked about the spiritual things that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 2.13, I want to bring up the fact that we have a whole series that we did a video series on these spiritual things that I've mentioned. Studying tongues, interpretation of tongues, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, dreams, visions, prophecy, and the workings of them. And so if you would like to go back to that entire series, check that out. And that'd be a great Bible study too, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I just want to encourage people that you know, the Holy Spirit is still alive and well and is still speaking to his people today. We really need to be connected to him now uh, more than ever, more than any other time in history. Right, Dina? That's right. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, Susan, thank you so much for bringing this topic to us. I hope this video has encouraged you all out there. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. If you'd like to find this video, you can find it on Susan's channel, Marriage Supper of the Lamb Ministries, right here on my channel, as well as our Rumble channels in BitChute and also in podcast on Google, Apple, and Spotify. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. And Susan has a new website called End Times Prophecy Catalog. So I encourage you guys to go out there and check it out. She's got her books on there, which you can download like straight from the site. So I encourage you to go and visit her on her website. And she's got other resources there. That's just really amazing. So Susan, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, well, apart from the video series I mentioned, I also have a Facebook page myself called Miracles I Have Seen. So if you like to read about miracles and miraculous things, you can head over there and check that out too. All righty then. Well, thank you again, everybody. And uh, God bless. We'll see you soon. Stay safe.